Hello and welcome to my video series called Passing Linear Algebra. So this you can think of as kind of like a, a virtual recitation. Um, so that being said, um, it's not meant to be like a standalone course. So you definitely still have to go to your lectures, still go to your actual recitations and everything. This is just another opportunity for supplemental learning. Okay, so that said, um, as long as you have your learning caps on, we can start from the very beginning with the most fundamental thing in linear algebra in my opinion which is a vector okay so here's how you refer to a vector you pick any letter in the english alphabet but the convention is v and then you put a little arrow top or a little arrow on top uh, and that means that this is referring to a vector okay in your textbooks though it'll be just the letter v but it'll be bold print okay but when you're writing it on with your hands like you can't really draw in bold, so instead you put the arrow on top. Okay, that's how you refer to a vector, and then what does it actually look like? So let me just give you an example vector. Okay, this one's going to have two entries, or you could say two components. And if it only has two, then you say that it's the x component and the y component. Okay, and each component is just a scalar. And a scalar, as I'm sure you know, is just the normal, the normal numbers that you're used to seeing, like 1, 2, negative 3, 0, something like that. Okay, so let's just make up two components. So let's say the x component is 1 and the y component is 2. So if I do that, how can we interpret this vector geometrically? So since it only has two components, then it lies in the xy plane, right? Because it has an x component and a y component, right? And then uh, if I give some tick marks here, then uh, how do I draw this? Well, it's 1 in the x direction and 2 in the y direction, but it's different from just a point like an ordered pair, because this, now it has a line drawn from the origin to the point with an arrowhead on the end. And so maybe you've heard before that vectors have a magnitude and um, a direction. So magnitude you can also think of as like a length, and then the direction is just like where it's pointing, like how much you rotate it around the, the origin. But I want to highlight something interesting about um, vectors, an interesting property of vectors. If I instead drew the same vector v, but I started it not at the origin, but I started it here at the point one zero, and then drew it like this. So it still has the same length and the same direction, but now I start. I didn't start it at the origin. This is the same vector v. Okay, so as long as a vector has the same uh, uh, magnitude and uh, direction, then it's referred to as the same vector, right? So I could have translated this vector anywhere in the x y plane. As long as it's pointing in the same direction, has the same length, it's still the vector v. Okay, another kind of vector that we can dream up is something, I don't know, it could have more than two entries, it could have one entry. Uh, let's say it has three, so what if it's one, four, negative two? So here's another example of a vector, okay? Um, and these lie in different dimensional spaces, right? v lies in the xy plane, it lies in two dimensions, and w lies in, would lie in the, XYZ coordinate system, right? So if you wanted to draw W geometrically, then you would have to have something like this, where here's your X axis, here's your Y axis, and here's your Z axis. And then you would go one uh, unit in the X component, four units in the Y component, and negative two in the Z component. Okay, in linear algebra, we have a fancy way of re referring to something like two dimensional space, three dimensional space. And so we would say, V, since it has two components, we say V is in this fancy R with the superscript 2. So you read the sentence, V is in R2. And literally all, it, all you can interpret this to mean is that the vector V has two entries. Okay, And then similarly, you would say W is in R3, right? where R3 just means three-dimensional space. Okay. Uh, okay, so now we know what a vector is. How can you do arithmetic with vectors? So like how can you add vectors together? So if I have the vectors 1, 2, right, this lives in R2. And then I have another vector in R2, 1, negative 1. And I wanted to add them together. So how can I compute this? Well, it's very straightforward. You just add component-wise, meaning the, the sum vector, the first entry of the sum, is the sum of the first entries, right? So you do one plus one is two, and then you do two plus negative one, and you get one, okay? Geometrically, there's a neat way to um, think about adding vectors. So I kind of have to be careful with my picture so that it makes sense. Um, 
here's your x-axis and your y-axis. Let's draw this first vector, 1, 2. So that's right here. And then the vector 1, negative 1 is right here. And now when you add vectors, um, here we're going to take advantage of that property of vectors I talked about earlier where you can translate it. And as long as it's pointing in the same direction with the same length, it's the same vector. So let's take this vector here, 1, negative 1, and translate it so that the tail of it is at the tip of the vector 1, 2. So we're going to take it and we're going to slide it up here so it's like this. Okay, so this is the same vector, 1, negative 1. We just translated it up here. So we connect it with the first vector. And then we connect the tail of the original vector to the tip of the translated vector. And just like that, we have this vector. What is this? This is 2 in the x component and 1 in the y component. So this vector here is 2, 1. And if you look, that's the sum, right? You get that the same way if you compute it like um, with just the numbers. So that's how you add vectors geometrically. You've probably learned this maybe in high school or something. Now let's talk about um, scalar multiplication of a vector. So let's say we have the vector 2, 1, and we want to we want to multiply it by 2. Okay, so this is called scalar multiplica multiplication because we're multiplying the vector by a scalar. So how do you do this? Well, you just distribute this 2 to each component of the vector, and that's how you compute it. So 4, 2, just like that. And geometrically, the, the thing that I want to point out about this, um, let me get some tick marks. Here's 2, 1, right? When we scale it by 2, the direction of the vector, the direction of the scaled vector doesn't change. So the, the vector 4, 2 is collinear with the vector 2, 1. And so that's a property of scalar multiplication. You're changing the length. Precisely, you're scaling it by 2, uh, but you're not changing the direction. Okay, now we know how to add vectors, and we know how to scale them. So now let's talk about this fancy buzzword of linear algebra called linear combination. Okay, linear combinations. So maybe it's intimidating because you never heard that phrase before, but it's really, really straightforward. So all it is, is it is a sum of, a sum of scaled vectors. And so what do I mean by that? Let's say you have two vectors. Let's keep it very simple and go 1, 0, and 0, 1. Okay? So we can add them together. And we can also know how to scale them by some scalar. So I can say C1 and C2, where those C1 and C2 are just some scalar. So this right here is the general form, what I've just written, is a general form of a linear combination of the vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1. Okay, so you're going to get some output vector, um, x, y, okay? This vector depends on what c1 and c2 is. Um, but this is how uh, you, you say what a linear combination You say x, y is a linear combination of the vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1. And if you want to go even further with the terminology, you can say it's a linear combination of 1, 0, and 0, 1 with weights... C1, C2. Okay, so here we go. C1 and C2, a new term, are called weights of linear combination. Okay, it's the scalars. So again, you say x, y, this vector x, y, is a linear combination of the vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1, where the weights are C1 and C2. Okay, so now that we know what a linear combination is, let's just uh, do one simple... Uh, example problem that I make. I'm, I'm hoping this series can be very exercise driven, like example problem driven, right? Because like I said, it's kind of like a virtual recitation. So let's say um, the question is, write uh, 3, 2, the vector 3, 2, as a linear combination of the vectors 6, 0, and 0, negative 8. Okay, how can we do this? Um, pause the video and try it uh, if you want to. So here's the solution. Well, all we can do, because we're taking a linear combination, is scale these two vectors by something and then add them together, and we should get the vector 3, 2. So we have 6, 0, and 0, negative 8. 
So basically all this question is boils down to is finding the weight of the linear combination. So what do those weights have to be? Well, we, we have zero up here, so no matter what we scale this vector by, it won't affect the first entry of 3, 2. Um, and so we have to get this 3 by scaling this first vector, 6, 0. So this first weight has to be 2, right? And then uh, what does this weight have to be? Well, it has to be negative 1 fourth, right? So we could say plus negative 1 fourth, or we can just say minus 1 fourth. And just like that, I've written 3, 2 as a linear combination of 6, 0, and 0, negative 8, right? And all we had to do was find the weights of the linear combination to answer that question. Um, okay, so in the next videos, we're going to talk about, like, systems of equations and representing the systems of equations in different ways. Eventually, when we learn all that stuff, when we learn about augmented matrices and row reduction and, and, and things of that sort, we're going to be able to solve much more complicated questions just like this, where it's not um, super obvious what the weights have to be of the linear combination. So thank you for watching.